everybody wants good news. I mean, who doesn't want to hear good news? There are times when I'm about to read the word. And so I just pray. I ask God to guide me. And I open the Bible up and just begin to read. Where, wherever I open the Bible up, I begin to read. And, and man, do I love it when the text that I read has some good news in it. There's, there's no feeling in the world like, you know, saying, Lord, speak to me. Opening that Bible up and beginning to read something that says he has cattle on a thousand hills. And you can tap into that like that feels good. Or you open it up and you get to a place where it says, ask and ye shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. Like there is no feeling in the world like reading some good stuff. But then there are times when I open up the Bible and I, you know, realize that God is talking about some stuff like judgment and how he ain't pleased with what he sees. And I've come to realize that, that, that that's not too inspiring. You know, we're not trying to have our whole faith vibe killed by having to hear that we might have to go through some stuff. <laughs> but as you know, every day ain't rainbows and unicorns. We, we like those days, but there are some realities to life. Things don't usually flow exactly the way that we would like them to. But we can find some nuggets in the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament and those nuggets have been designed to help us understand today's topic. And that topic is embracing the future. Coming up next on The Trifle Box. All right, Trifling Ones family, I found that one of the scriptures that people tend to love is Jeremiah 29, 11. And why wouldn't somebody? When you look at what it says, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This is pretty dope, right? I mean, let me read that again. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Like, that's really, really positive. Like, ain't nothing in that statement that don't sound good to me. I mean, he says, I know the plans I have for you, and I'm, I'm going to prosper you. I'm not going to harm you. I'm going to give you hope and a future. But the problem is that many times we read this text without any context without the background associated with what's actually happening in the scripture. So most scholars would agree that Jeremiah wrote this text and he's often dubbed the weeping prophet and he's called the weeping prophet because he lives, he exists during a time when things ain't so good. He lives during a time when he looks around and society is evil and men are wicked. And in addition to that, the people are suffering as a result of their own wickedness. It's important to note that Jeremiah is a prophet and he's what you consider a mouthpiece for God. And so he's a, he's a chosen spokesperson who communicates God's message. And while Jeremiah is the one who's physically writing these words, there's specific instructions that God has for his people for a particular time in history. And Jeremiah has written a letter to the people who are exiles, those who have been removed from the city of Jerusalem, and he's giving them some, some not so pleasant news. What he tells them is in the midst of them being in exile away from their homeland, he says, you need to make the best of this situation because it isn't going to change anytime soon. He says, yeah, yeah, I see you. I see the suffering that you're going through. I, I, I see what's happening and I'm going to step in, but it's going to be a minute. It's going to be a while. In fact, it's going to be 70 years. That, that's a long time, y'all. And I want you to think about it. Imagine being in an uncomfortable situation and, and you receive a letter from a prophet, a, a so-called prophet, and, and he says, I'm going to fulfill my promise, but you got to wait. For most of us, waiting is not cool. We don't like waiting. It's one thing to be in a situation, but then to know that that situation is going to happen, that that thing is going to be around for a while, that, that can be tough. And so God says, make the most of your current situation. Build houses, plant gardens, get married, 
Seek the peace and prosperity of the city that you have been taken captive into. Because if it prospers, then you prosper. Oh, and one more thing he says. If any of these prophets tell you anything different, they're tripping. So now we get to our two points that we're going to discuss as it relates to embracing the future. And the first of those points is with God, the future plan is not a mystery. With God, the future plan is not a mystery. So again, the text says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So the people are in a strange land and, and they know God can do some amazing things. They, they may have even felt like God, God is going to come through. Like they're, they're confident of that. Then this letter arrives and it ain't what they want to hear. Now they've got to endure the shame of living in a foreign land. They have to face an uncomfortable situation, but they have to do it for a long time. You know, we may not understand our situations and experiences. We, we may be unsure about how this is going to turn out. And even when we do know that it's going to be okay, eventually, there is something about having to wait in a bad situation. We start to feel helpless and we start to feel like, when is this going to end? God says, 70 years. You know, some days it feels like, I, I can do this. And then there are other days when we feel like we want to scream out loud because we're just so tired and it doesn't feel like it's ever going to end. But God says, I know the plans I have for you. You know, we might be clueless, but it ain't a mystery to God because he knows what he has planned for us. You know, this, this whole exile thing wasn't the plan for the people. They didn't say, yo, how about we have another country take all our stuff and move us out of our homes? This whole thing is a mystery to them. We don't plan to have a foreclosure or to get a divorce. We don't plan to become dependent on alcohol or pain pills or weed. We, we didn't plan on developing a mental health condition or having to take care of a sibling or a child or a spouse or even a parent with one. We didn't plan on having a loved one get Alzheimer's. And because we didn't plan it, the outcome is a mystery for us. But it says, for I know the plans that I have. Not the plans that you have. Not the things that you plant for your own life. But God knows the plans. You know, there, there are times when we lack knowledge in a particular area because it, it ain't our area of expertise. But then we know somebody, we, we know somebody that, that has that expertise and, and that, that's what they do, that, that's what they focus on. And so we consult them, we get feedback from them, we let them take the lead in that particular situation. We, we follow their YouTube pages and, and we consume video after video to try to gain insight because they have the credibility based on their track record and based on their knowledge and, and based on their experiences, they are the experts. Well, God is the expert in our lives because he's the architect. He, he has the blueprint. He knows. And for that reason, with God, the future is not a mystery. We got to trust the expert or the architect in our lives. But then our second point is, with God, the fulfilled plan is not malicious. With God, the fulfilled plan is not malicious. Let's read verse 11 again. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So God says, plans to prosper you and not harm you. There it is, not harm you. God isn't trying to be malicious or harmful with the plan. The fulfilled plan, the thing that's going to end up happening, the plan that God is working right now isn't designed to be harmful or malicious. Now, that doesn't mean that some really difficult things aren't going to happen in our lives. Think about it. The people are literally living away from their homeland. And, and this alone, I'm sure, probably created a high level of stress. 
In fact, right before today's text, in, in verses 8 through 10, it says this. It says, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I haven't sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. And so God is like, don't believe the hype. Don't believe these old lying folks who say that this isn't going to last very long or, or who say, rise up and fight for your freedom, thus saith the Lord. Nah, that isn't what God is saying. What he's saying is get comfortable where you're at. And he's saying, I'm not doing this to be harmful and malicious. Because what you're going through now will shape you and, and it's going to mold you into the people, the persons, or the person I need you to be for my plans. I got some plans. Today, the difficulties of today bring maturity for tomorrow. Today, the difficulties of today bring insight for tomorrow. Today brings humility for tomorrow. Today brings compassion for tomorrow. Today brings patience for tomorrow. He isn't trying to kill us, y'all. Nah, he's... He's doing something within us. And if we don't experience today, then we never have the hope for tomorrow. Today's pain isn't a thing that God let happen to you, but rather it's the thing that he's doing with you. So it's, it's a beautiful thing when we hear, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And those words are true, but they are brought against the backdrop of some pretty tough times. So embrace the future he has for you by knowing this, that with God, the future plan is not a mystery. He knows what he's doing. And with God, the fulfilled plan is not malicious. He's not trying to hurt us. Keep these in mind and you'll be able to fully embrace, not your plan, but embrace the future that God has just for you. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to say thank you for all that you're doing. We're asking right now, Heavenly Father, that you would allow us to be able to see not only the promises that God intends on fulfilling within us, but also that there are some things that we've got to get through to get to that promise. I'm asking, Heavenly Father, that you would allow us to be able to embrace fully the future that God has for us. The good, the bad, the ugly, the everything. Lord, I ask that you would allow us to be shaped and molded into whoever it is that you want us to be. And that we will fulfill that and live that according to your divine purpose. All these things we ask in your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray, and all of the Triton Ones say, Amen.